Guys, I want to talk about, as you know, this like emerging trend that we've been talking about offline about drones in warfare. Recently, we saw small drones controlled by the Houthis attack cargo vessels in the Suez Canal. It led to rather large scale supply disruptions, economic value destruction. We've seen videos, Sachs, I think you have one, we can pull it up and take a look, of Ukrainian controlled drones flying in to destroy tanks and large warehouses in Russian held territories, causing tens of millions of dollars of damage. I think we're seeing the acceleration of the changing face of warfare technology, lots of these small form factor, low cost autonomous physical agents. And I think there's a bunch of implications, both with respect to war, but also how we spend money on defense and how Silicon Valley is involved in response. Um, Sachs, I'd love to hear your, your points of view. Maybe you can highlight for us some of the things you've been seeing in the utilization of these new technologies in, in the war, given our, you're our in-house war yeah. correspondent. And <laughs> you obviously do some work in Silicon Valley. Go ahead. I've heard a, a lot about the impact of, of drones just by watching the coverage of the Ukraine war. I was listening to an interview with an American mercenary who's fighting on the side of Ukraine, and he described how ubiquitous these drones were on the battlefield now. He said that you literally can't get out of a trench to go to the bathroom because a drone will basically uh, get you. And he said they're buzzing around. They sound like mosquitoes because they're kind of just everywhere on the battlefield. Both Ukraine and Russia have them. And Several months ago, going into this year, Zelensky said that this would be the big game changer for Ukraine. They're going to make a million drones. I don't think it's worked out that way. It turns out that as many drones as Ukrainians have been able to put on the battlefield, the Russians have even more because they're able to mass produce them in factories. They've got bigger drones, better drones. And I think the most important variable in, in the war so far with respect to drones is that the Russians have pretty advanced electronic warfare. And so they've been able to jam a lot of the Ukrainian drones, whereas the reverse has not been true for the Ukrainians. So I would say that drones have been a huge factor in the war, but so far the balance there is tipping towards the Russians as it is in so many other areas as well. But to your larger point, there's no question this is the, the future of warfare. And you're seeing that it's creating a lot of opportunities for asymmetric warfare. So for, for example, with the Houthis, they've been firing cheap missiles and drones at our, at our ships in the Red Sea. And we've been having to spend $2 million air defense missiles shooting down $2,000 drones. So if, if that continues and we don't have a good response to this problem, it's going to really change the balance of power. I don't know if this was at our summit or if I heard it this later from some senior person in the military who said that aircraft carriers are outdated technology, like they don't make sense anymore. And we're going to see a shift towards lots of small, autonomous, drone-like systems on the battlefield taking out targets. And as a result, if you game theory this out, the necessity for defense systems against large amounts of swarming drone-like systems. And then, you know, what do you actually have to do with your existing military architecture to play into this kind of new tactical system? And then that's going to require a massive evolution in technology. And is the United States prepared? They should should be. Silicon Valley play they a role? should be. We should. I Maybe, Nick, you can throw up this the first link that I sent you. But eight years ago, I came to this conclusion and I invested in this company called SailDrone, which is autonomous drones in the seas. Our customers include the U.S. Navy. The chairman of our company actually is Admiral Mike Mullen, who is the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But these drones are capable of going into some of the most dangerous places in the world and collecting enormous amounts of surveillance data and information that otherwise takes the United States government lots of time and lots of money and is pretty scattershot. And instead, with these things, you can be constantly in hotspots. And if you go to the next one, so much so that you know we've deployed some of these drones in the Middle East, and there was a point at which the Iranian Navy intercepted two of our drones and picked them up. And this was kind of like a, a global thing a few years ago. But I really believe in this trend. And I think that we have an enormous responsibility to be funding these things. These are really complicated systems to build, obviously, and they take lots of time. So these are not overnight successes, Friedberg, and they take lots of money, which is hard to come by as well. But these are absolutely the right kinds of businesses, because eventually, 
at a minimum, you are building systems that can measure and collect enormous amounts of really critical data so that people can make better decisions, which hopefully is measured in saving life, right? And then over time, you actually get to a military that should be much cheaper, much safer, and has fewer people in general on our side and on our enemy sides on the front lines, which means fewer casualties. And I think that that's the whole value of this entire movement. It's cheaper, it's way better, it's much more useful, and it gives the respective armies that use these things, or militaries rather, a fuller picture so that you can make decisions that have enormous consequences. Yeah, and in February, the Department of Defense on a panel in Arlington, Virginia, briefed reporters and industry folks on their interest in growing their partnerships in Silicon Valley to access the necessary technologies that are going to rewrite the face of warfare. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen kind of two sides of this in Silicon Valley. A good number of venture capitalists and entrepreneurs and technologists think that it's morally incorrect to support warfare technology. And then there are a few that are going blazing ahead with supporting this new evolution and these technologies. Do you guys see the same? And is there going to be well, kind it's of a, this? It's, a, this, it's yeah. a big step to weaponize these things, right? So Sildrone, we have a very good, big, thriving, successful business. These machines aren't weaponized by any stretch of the imagination. And so I think that that comment is more genuflecting and virtue signaling than it is real. Because in order to even be legitimately considered for some kind of like armed, unmanned product, you have to be deep inside of the bowels of the DOD and Pentagon and have been working with them for years to even be taken seriously. So the startups that are like eschewing those deals are not even close to those deals. And the startups that are close to them are probably being much more quiet and thoughtful and hush-hush because the path to do that isn't legitimate unless you've been in business with these folks for 10 plus years. Yeah, I think it's it's more a commentary on the fact that if this is where an organization, the Department of Defense, that has a trillion dollar annual budget is going to be allocating resources, that technology is going to need to come from somewhere. And the investors in Silicon Valley that are making these investments are likely going to outperform those who are not. Does that sound reasonable to you, Sax, that there is this shift underway and that, again, well, folks who have shy, shied away from defense technology are ne you know, necessarily going to be left out of a, a, a you know, kind of a new industry that's emerging in Silicon Valley? Well, I guess the way I put it is that the U.S. government spends over $800 billion every year on defense, and it's not clear what we're getting for that money because in Ukraine, for example, we've run out of artillery shells. We've actually, we've run out of Patriots. We've run out of Javelins. We've run out of Stingers. So we're spending all this money. We're not getting a lot for it. And part of the reason is because the defense industry is consolidated down to these five prime defense contractors who are basically an oligopoly. And we have this cost plus procurement system where they just raise their prices every year and the government pays it. So I think all of us want the United States to have an effective defense. I mean, I want us to use our military power more wisely. I don't like all these stupid wars we keep getting in, but I do want the United States as an American to be the most powerful country. I do want us to get the best value for our defense dollars. And the only way that's going to change is if the defense industry gets disrupted by a bunch of startups doing innovative things. And there's no question that I think drones are the future of warfare. To your point about autonomy, I think that is where this is going next, is that right now the drones are typically controlled by you know somebody with like a VR headset. They're called tele teleoperated. Yeah. Teleoperated. And they're FPV, this first person vision drone. And you basically strap some sort of explosive onto it, and then you drive it into whatever your target, target is. Yeah, Those types of drones are easier to disrupt by electronic warfare because if you can disrupt the signal from the teleoperator, then the drone basically doesn't know what to do. And so you're right, the next step here is autonomous systems that can be programmed with a target and can find it on its own, make decisions on its own. And then they also build in some shielding against 
some of this like jamming technology or this EW electronic warfare technology. So that's where all these things, that's where the battlefield is of the future is headed. And in a, in a weird way, if you think about humans becoming a smaller and smaller piece of the battlefield and autonomous drones becoming a larger and larger piece of it, these wars become resource wars and that's right. basically technology wars. That's right. Which, which may or may not be good. I don't know. But by the way, so, so this is the point I wanted to make. If you pull yeah. up this chart, if, if that is where warfare is headed, is a large number of small autonomous systems that go and find a target and try and execute a mission. And, you know, in the case of Ukraine saying they want to have a million, China might say, I want to have 100 million. All of these systems are dependent on lithium ion battery systems. Today, 79% of lithium ion battery production comes out of China. The US is only 6.2% of global lithium ion battery production. And China has talked about scaling up drone manufacturing to a level that the US simply cannot even contemplate in its industrial architecture today. So it, it seems to me that if that is where warfare tactically is headed, that China has a huge leg up and is going to become a critical point of dependency for the United States to develop a, an arsenal necessary to be competitive in this this kind of next evolution of warfare. I will well, say that yeah, like if, yeah. if you then game theory this out, like how do you defend against these autonomous electronic systems? There's a technology called EMP or electromagnetic pulsing, where as you guys know, if you run a very high current electric field, you can actually send out and emit a pulse that then when it hits electronic circuits far away, induces a high electric current in those circuits and short circuits them. So EMPs are a, a defense system that allow you to take out electronic systems. And this has been, you know, kind of a, a part of warfare since probably the 1960s, 50s, but targeted EMPs and targeted systems for eliminating all of these autonomous systems becomes a new defense technology that I know several startups in Silicon Valley that have been funded with a lot of capital by folks that we all know very well that are kind of pursuing this. We don't have a choice. Because I think the point is that if you, you just, Nick, you just post this photo, we have an enormous human capital problem with the military, which is there's just not enough folks enlisting anymore. So we don't have any choice except to automate and become drone dependent. Just tell us these numbers, Chima. This is a chart from the Department of Defense that shows military enlistments looking back from about the 1970s through today. And these are two lines that are just going from the upper left to the lower right. And so we're at all-time lows with respect to the number of people that actually want to join the military. And so if we are supposed to, as Sack said, be this very sharp fighting force, then all of the money that we're spending needs to get allocated into things that can be remotely operated. There's, we don't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, so Freeberg, you, you asked the question, how do we defend against these drones? Yes, there's EMP technology. If you want to use an EMP, you better make sure there's not any planes nearby because it will take them out of the sky. You better make sure. By the way, there are now, there's tar you can target EMPs in a narrow cone, which is part of the, the, the technology yeah, I mean, evolution. You better make sure yeah. you don't hit any of your own stuff because you'll fry right. the electronics on those unless you EMP harden them, which by the way will happen. I mean, if, if the US gets really good at, at sending out EMP pulses, then our opponents will start EMP hardening their drones. But in any event, yes, it's a category of defense. So is electronic warfare. The, the one defense investment I've made is actually in this idea of how do you defend against drones? And it's a startup where I led the seed round called Allen Control Systems, and they have a product called Bullfrog, which is a gun turret that uses a standard M240 machine gun, but it's got a scanner next to it, next to the machine gun that is searching the sky for enemy drones. And it uses computer vision to recognize them, and then it just shoots them down like very quickly. And it seems to me this is, it's maybe not the only way of doing it, but it's a really good way of doing it because uh, you could mount these things to a, a vehicle. I mean, imagine in the future that we have these autonomous drones everywhere that are basically assassination drones. How are you going to stop them? I mean, how do you move the president of the United States around? I mean, in his caravan, yeah. you're going to have to have, you know, his caravan is going to have to have some sort of electronic warfare system on it to basically Protect prevent him. drones, yeah. but it's going to need some sort of last line of defense where you can actually shoot a drone <laughs> out of the sky. Or and he stays what, in his basement. 